Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I'm really excited to be here with you again today. We're going to be talking about first grade fluency and activities to teach, um, you know, fluency through 10. All right, so now I'm going to show you some ways to build fluency in first grade. One of the most important things that you need to know is that you have to make sure they have that fluency through five that they were supposed to get in kindergarten. We all know kindergarten is a non-compulsory grade in most states. And even if it is compulsory or even if kids do go to kindergarten, sometimes they don't have fluency through five when they get to first grade. Or they had fluency in, in June and now they don't in uh, September or August whenever you start school. So you're gonna, the first thing you want to do is review. So here are some five frames and um, I would do the subitizing, you know, asking kids how much do you see, what do you see, that kind of stuff. You're going to want to work with your five frames, especially at the beginning of the year. Here is another um, five frame, uh, and this is a magnetized one so that you can hold it up. And when you hold it up, you know, the, the magnets don't fall off, or you can put it on the magnet board, so forth. You just, you know, magnets, good things. Um, you don't want to put them around kids that are still eating stuff, though, because that's not a good thing to eat magnets. But if they don't, if you don't have any eaters, then use the magnets. Um, so you want to review the five frames. Okay. After you've done a lot of review work with the five frames, then you want to bring out the 10 frame and do a lot of work with making 10 because the fluency for first grade is fluency through 10. So you have these counters, and I usually have some sort of you know, um, pan or Tupperware, I have the kids throw it in there, and then I say, okay, show me how to make 10. What's one way to make 10? And they say, oh, well, you know, six and four more is one way to make 10, okay? And we'll do it on a 10 frame sometimes, and sometimes we don't do it on a 10 frame, but they have 10 counters, and they throw the counters, and I say, okay, show me another way. How did we make 10 this time? Well, we put we had six and we had seven, eight, nine, ten. So we had seven plus three is ten. So that's what you do. You, the two-sided counters are great. They're great for all grades because even when you get in the upper grade, you can start doing fractions and stuff with them. So I do two-sided counters. And then, of course, you use the ten frames. And these are ten frames. These are ten frames that I use as subitizing cards. And so, you know, I'll say to the kids, how many do you see? How many do you see? How many do you see? And they say, oh, I see, you know, five and one, right? That makes six. Um, or I see six, right? Um, I see six on there and four are missing, and that makes ten. Um, or you can tell stories with them. You can put the counters on the ten frames and say, you know, you'd have a blank 10 frame and you'd say, oh, okay, so Susie had, you know, seven apples and she gave away two. How many does she have left? Now, of course, this would be a blank 10 frame, so they'd see just five. So you, the point is you want to have lots of different 10 frames, some with dots where they match, and then, you, of course, you're going to have blank 10 frames. And then I have these 10 frame matching cards, and in the 10 frame matching cards, that's what the kids do, is they go and they match the 10 frame with the equation, right? Remember, that's important in first grade. They should be able to match the frame with the equation. And so there's lots of different ones. If you buy the fluency kit, they're in the fluency kits. But if you don't make them, you can make them on your computer. Um, or you can just print 10 frames off and go to the Staples and get the dots and make them that way. Uh, and make them big and make them small and make them all different sizes. Here's another one. Here's four and six and it makes 10. But so this would be a center where kids are matching the equations with the 10 frames. Now another game we play is we play how many more. So they roll the dice and they get five. And we say, there's two on the outside, three on the inside. It's a total of five. How many more to get 10? And so then they would take out the number line and they would say, well, I had five. To get to 10, I have to jump one, two, three. Well, they were at five. So they jumped one, two, three, 
four, five. I jumped five. And I have all kinds of number lines. I have number lines that they make. I have number lines that I buy, that they can write on. I have these kind of number lines. I like these number lines. I got them from State Lake Lakeshore. So I'd say, oh, you started at three. How many more to 10? And then the kids would do the jumps to see how many more to 10. All right, so there's lots of different things. I also like the Uno cards. I'll have the kids play with the Uno cards and they'll pick a card, you know. And then they have to say how many more to 10. They can pick a wild card and say, oh, I'm gonna start at nine, right? I'm gonna start at nine and it's one more to 10. If I start at nine, it's one more to 10, right? So, and you could play games where like, they have to say how many more to 10 and however many more it is to 10, they get a counter. Whoever has the most counters at the end of the game would win. The idea is that you play games to teach uh, getting to 10. All right, so this is the first part of this video, and I've given you a few ideas of working on fluency in first grade. In the second video, I'm going to give you some more ideas on working on fluency 210, which is the first grade Common Core State Standard. Thank you. Happy mathing.